Hey everyone, welcome to Mad Backyard. Today we're going to show you the secret to getting a great sear on your steaks when using a pellet grill. Now would you believe we cooked every one of these steaks shown here today on our pellet grills and they were all cooked to the exact same internal temperature, 130 degrees or a perfect medium rare. This shows you there's a lot more to cooking a steak than just getting the internal temperature right. We want a great sear, we want that great crust, and we want that great uh, brown exterior Maillard reaction on the outside of our steak. Now each one of these steaks was cooked on our pellet grill using a different technique and they all obviously yielded a very different result. And even though none of our pellet grills go up above 450 to 500 degrees, we were able to get a great sear on some of these steaks well over 700 degrees. And today in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how we did it. So you may be wondering, why do these temperatures matter so much? Well, in order to get a great sear on a steak, sometimes called the crust or the Maillard reaction, which is just technically a fancy name for the browning of the meat on the outside of a, a steak or a roast or something like that, we need to get the right temperature on that meat. You see, when you don't cook your steak hot enough, you don't get that nice brown exterior. You get a more of a gray, dull look on the outside of your steak. It resembles more of a meatloaf than a nice uh, seared steak. And in order to get that searing Maillard reaction on the outside of our steak to happen quickly, we need temperatures in the 550 to 800 degree range. One of the biggest complaints we hear about pellet grills all the time is that while they're great for low and slow smoking, they just don't get hot enough to get up in those temperature ranges to really get that searing Maillard reaction to occur on our steaks and hamburgers. And to a certain extent, this is true. This is because by default, pellet grills are designed to cook food indirectly in the 175 degree to 400 degree range. This is well below what we're looking for to sear our steaks in the 550 to 800 degree range. So instead of this indirect heat, what we really need is direct, ideally conductive heat, where the steak is making direct contact with the heat source itself to get a good sear and a good Maillard reaction to occur on the outside of our steak. So how do we do this on a pellet grill? Today we're gonna to show you multiple options to get a good sear on your steak, whether you've got the direct heat option like we do on our Pit Boss 1150, or you don't have a direct heat option like on our Z Grill 700 over here. And by the way, our Z Grills doesn't go any higher than 450 degrees, and our Pit Boss doesn't go any higher than 500 degrees, but we're gonna show you how we seared our steaks on them anyway. So here's what most people do when they first try to sear a steak on their pellet grill. We've got a mid-range uh, Z Grills pellet grill model here. I've had it on high for about 20 minutes and we've gotten it up to about 450 degrees. This is about as high as this uh, model of pellet grill is gonna go. It does not have the direct heat option. We're gonna open up the lid. Got our steak, which we seasoned and oiled, and we did everything right as far as that goes. We let it rest at room temperature. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the grates and see what kind of sear we get. Now it's searing a little bit, okay? But you can see we've got no direct heat from under the uh, steak here. I'm gonna let it sit here for about a minute or two and then we'll flip it. Hey everybody, sorry we didn't realize my microphone died during this part of the filming until later, but I'll kind of narrate what I was talking about during this little segment. I'm showing you how the steak is not getting any uh, sear marks at all, it's not getting any kind of browning or Maillard reaction occurring. It, it's starting to cook, yes, but it's not getting that browning that we're really looking for. So we decided to just let this steak continue cooking until it got to 120 degrees internal temperature, at which point we removed it and let it rest and come up to that medium rare final temperature of 130 degrees. And right here I'm just showing you that even though we brought the steak up to the correct internal temperature, we never got any kind of browning or searing on the outside, uh, trying to cook it on the pellet grill set on the highest setting of 450 degrees. Even though the pellet grill was set to 450 degrees, these grates, uh, as best I could measure them with my Thermapro instant thermometer, were only at about 200 degrees. They weren't absorbing much ambient temperature and they definitely weren't providing any uh, significant conductive heat to our steak. Now there are actually several ways to sear a steak on a pellet grill, and this first way we're going to show you is not the hottest way to do it, but it's definitely the easiest way to do it. We've got our pellet grill set up here at 275 degrees, and all we've done is add a cast iron pan. Uh, we didn't take any internal components out, we didn't take out any flame diffusers or uh, heat shields or anything like that. All we've done is uh, make sure our top rack is in place and we've added a good cast iron pan. I like these ones from Lodge because I think they absorb heat and uh, distribute heat really well and they're really good at absorbing ambient temperature and turning that into that direct conductive heat that we're looking for to sear our steak. So the easiest way to sear a steak on a pellet grill is just to add a cast iron pan. Now I mentioned we're at 275 degrees and you might be thinking, why are we uh, uh, so low. Uh, we want to cook this hot and fast, don't we? Well, if you look at our steak over here, this is about an inch and a half thick New York strip steak. Now, I didn't go and get 
Prime or Wagyu or anything fancy. This is just a regular uh, working man steak. If you get that reference, let me know in the comments. We're gonna take this steak and we're actually gonna reverse sear it. So what that means is that we cook it a little bit before we sear it. And this allows us to get the steak up to a good internal temperature that we're looking for without burning the outside before we get to that point. So we got our uh, pellet grill set to 275 degrees. With these steaks, we took them out of the refrigerator and we patted them down really, really dry. We want a nice dry surface on the outside of our steaks in order to get a really good crust and bark when we go to sear them later. We didn't put any oil whatsoever on these steaks. All we did was add salt and pepper and let them sit on the counter for about 30 minutes to come up to room temperature. Now room temperature is about 70 degrees or so, so that's kind of where the internal temperature of this steak is, maybe a little lower. We're gonna reverse sear it and put it on the top grate of our pellet grill to get it up to an internal temperature of 90 degrees. Now it's only 20 degrees from where we are, so it's really not gonna take that long at 275 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get our cast iron pan in here as well so that it starts preheating. When this gets up to 90 degrees internal temperature, we're gonna remove it, crank the heat on our pellet grill up as high as it'll go, and then we'll finish it with a sear. Okay, it's been about six or seven minutes with the steak on at 275 degrees. Like I said, this was already at room temperature, uh, so we didn't have to keep it on too long to bring the internal temperature up to 90. If you take a look here, we'll check on our uh, Thermapro instant thermometer, right about uh, 89. 90 degrees, uh, close enough for me. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we took it off the grill. We're gonna cover it in foil to keep it warm. And this whole, uh, I'm gonna cover it in foil and then I'll talk. Don't leave it in the direct sunlight like this, or it may actually overcook, but it's a nice warm day today. We're just gonna leave it in the shade and it'll stay nice and warm over here. Now, if your steaks are an inch or less in thickness, you can skip all this reverse sear stuff in the beginning and just go right to searing your steaks. Uh, if you try to reverse sear a really thin steak by cooking it first, then searing it, you're probably just gonna end up overcooking. But our steaks are about an inch and a half in thickness, so that's why we're doing this first step first. If uh, you've got a really, really thick filet mignon, like two or three inches thick even, you definitely wanna uh, reverse sear by cooking that internal temperature up to 90 degrees and then uh, searing it in the hot pan after that. So we took it off the grill, now we're gonna turn the pellet grill all the way up. We turned it up to high here, and I've got our cast iron pan preheating. It's only been in there uh, during the 275 degree stage, and then now on the high setting for a little while. Um, I like using these little infrared thermometers. Uh, these really are pretty inexpensive on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description down below. But these are great for knowing exactly how hot your cast iron, your flat top griddle, anything else is. You just point the laser right at whatever surface you're measuring. And you can see that right now we're at about 338 degrees or so. So we wanna get this up to about at least 450 degrees. That's the most we're probably gonna get on this cast iron pan with uh, the pellet grill set up in this uh, indirect heat setting. So we're gonna let this uh, run for about 10, 15 minutes here uh, on high while our steak rests a little bit under the foil and then we'll come back and uh, sear the steak. Another option for searing your steaks if you want a little more surface area is this uh, grill and griddle pan from Lodge. You can see the one side is uh, flat so you get that nice direct conductive heat and the other side has more of a, a grill mark type texture so you can get those uh, good sear lines on your steaks if that's what you're looking for. Nice thing about this versus the skillet is you can probably fit three, maybe even four small steaks on this one. Uh, you can set this over your fire pot or I find it works really well right over the uh, direct heat on a pit boss if you have that direct heat option on your pellet grill as well. Okay, it's been about 15, uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, we've had the pellet grill on high here. We're gonna check our cast iron temperature again using our infrared thermometer. Now we've got it brought up about 430 degrees or so. It's probably as good as we're gonna get using indirect heat on a pellet grill. Um, but we're gonna get this on. And you'll notice that when we put the steak on, 430 may not be enough with ambient uh, air temperature to cook our steak and get a sear. But when we talk about uh, direct conductive heat where the steak is actually touching the heat source, it makes a big difference. So before you start searing your steak, make sure you have everything you're gonna need. We've got our uh, instant thermometer here, our Thermapro instant thermometer. We've got our steak, obviously. We've got our tongs. Got a good heat proof glove for holding our hand over the uh, hot skillet and turning the steak. 
Gonna have my phone ready with a uh, timer. We're gonna aim for about two minutes on each side. Okay, so we got that ready to go as soon as we put it on. Now, as I said before, we didn't put any kind of oil or anything on the steak. If we just put it on the dry cast iron like it is right now, it's gonna stick pretty hard. So we need some sort of lubricant on our cast iron before we sear it. Today, I'm gonna be using this uh, Wagyu beef tallow. Beef tallow is just a fancy word for rendered beef fat. And the nice thing about using this, it's kind of like the consistency of uh, soft butter or Crisco even. You put a little bit in the pan and it gives you that kind of same Wagyu uh, flavor without having to buy expensive Wagyu steak. So we're gonna go ahead and take a uh, good dollop of this and throw it in our cast iron. It's gonna melt pretty quick there. Get this all around the pan. And then we're gonna take our steak. We're gonna lay it down in the pan. And we're gonna start our timer. I'm gonna keep this closed just to keep some of that fat from spitting out on us. The other thing I like to use is a baking sheet with this wire rack on top to put the steak on when it's done. The nice thing about this is it lets air circulation all around the steak so that it stays nice and uh, crusty and crispy rather than putting it on a plate where that bottom's gonna get soggy if you put it uh, on the plate right after taking it off the, uh, the hot cast iron. So we're at about a minute here. Now, you know the internal temperature of the steak was 90 degrees when we started. I like my steaks medium rare, and that means a final internal temperature of 130 degrees. So we're gonna aim to get these up to 120 to 25-ish, then pull them off, knowing they're gonna keep rising in temperature at least another five degrees after we take them off. I'll put down in the description a, a list of temperature ranges, depending on how you like your steak, medium, medium well. I'll put those temperatures as well, so you can check that out and use it, and just kind of adjust based on uh, how you like your steak to be done. We're at about a minute and a half here on this steak. I'll see if I can get this turned so you can see it. We're at about, uh, about 100 degrees, uh, 95, almost 100. We're gonna let this keep going here. So as you can see, we got a better sear on this steak. This is not the kind of sear that I necessarily prefer, but it's better than just cooking it on the grates at that 200 degree level that I showed you at the beginning. We're gonna go ahead and take this off and put it on our wire rack. Okay, so we were able to get a semi-decent sear on our steak using the cast iron without removing any grill components. Now this is a, like I said, the easiest way to do it, but not necessarily the hottest way. Um, I'm gonna show you on a grill like this, it doesn't have the easy direct heat option like we have on our Pit Boss. Uh, you can still get that direct heat on the cast iron to get a good sear on your steaks. So go through the reverse sear process with your steak just like we did before. If we had our steak on, we got our grill set to 275 degrees. We put it right up top here until the internal temperature is about 90 degrees, and then we'd remove it uh, from the grates at that point. Now what I'm gonna do before I turn the heat up is I'm gonna remove the components from this grill. Now every pellet grill is gonna be a little different on how you do it. Make sure you're extra cautious when you're doing this, have a good heat proof surface like another open grill or something to move these hot parts to and have a good um, heat proof uh, grilling gloves. These go up to 1400 degrees, so I'm not worried about these burning my hands when I touch this metal that's been in here at 275. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, heat diffuser out first. We'll take our foil out actually. So we're gonna go ahead and take our uh, heat diffuser out first. And then we've got the flame diffuser over the fire pot. Be extra cautious when you're taking this out. When I started the grill, I didn't slide it into the slots. I just left it sitting on top so it'd be easier to pull out at this point. So I'm just gonna pull this straight up and off. And again, these gloves go up to 1400 degrees. Make sure you've got really good heat proof gloves. I'll put links to these down in the description. So now we've got our exposed fire pot here. I'm gonna take some grates, put them over the fire pot. Now we're gonna take our cast iron pan and put that over the fire pot. And now we can go ahead and turn the temperature up on our grill all the way to high. And we're basically getting the benefits of direct heat without having to have a uh, direct heat option on our pellet grill. 
Now a little word of caution, you'll notice I'm using a contained cast iron pan over the fire pot to my pellet grill. Uh, you might be thinking, well, why can't I just put the steaks right over the fire? Um, you could try it, but you're likely gonna end up with a big grease fire inside your pellet grill, especially if you're doing multiple steaks or some really fatty hamburgers that are gonna drip a lot of grease down into the bottom of the barrel there. That grease is gonna collect and uh, be touching the sides of the fire pot. It's eventually gonna ignite and you're gonna have a big fire inside your pellet grill. Um, you can Google or YouTube some uh, pellet grill fires, pellet grill explosions. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about with a quick, simple search. So what I'm using is the cast iron pan to make sure we keep all the grease and everything contained. It's not gonna drip down into the base of our uh, pellet grill. You know, we took out the heat diffusers and the plates and everything else that drain the grease to the grease bucket. So those are all gone. So we wanna make sure we keep that grease contained uh, in the nice cast iron pan here. Okay, we've got our uh, cast iron pan ripping hot now from being over that direct flame. We have another uh, steak we reverse seared and got it up to 90 degrees internal temperature. Let's take a look at the temperature of our cast iron pan now. You can see it's even smoking a little bit. Got our infrared thermometer. And if you look at there, we're up to 660 degrees or so in the middle there, 675 in the middle. So a lot hotter than we had before. We were running at 200 degrees when we did it with uh, no cast iron. We were at 450 degrees when we didn't take the heat diffusers out and now we're at 670 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull the cast iron a little closer to us. It's been sitting right over the fire pot. Got our uh, beef tallow again, and you don't have to use Wagyu beef tallow every time you make a steak. I like using it to get that kind of extra buttery, fatty flavor on my steaks. But if you um, aren't using beef tallow, use a high smoke point oil like grapeseed or canola or regular olive oil. Stay away from extra virgin olive oil that has a really low smoke point and it'll immediately start smoking the second you put it on. This is gonna smoke too because the smoke point's in the upper 400s and we're at 675, but at least you're not gonna get uh, the immediate burning and acrid smell you might get from a low smoke point oil. So use grapeseed, canola, regular olive oil, I would recommend. So we're gonna put a little uh, dollop of this on here again. See, it's melting a lot faster now. We're gonna move it around a little bit. Let that oil get a little hot over the fire pot before we stick our uh, steak on there. Okay, we're gonna get our timer ready. We're gonna aim for about two minutes per side, but again, we're going for 120 degrees internal temperature as our final. Let that oil get a little hotter there. Start our timer. Okay, so if you wanna come in, we're at about one minute. Let's take a look at how the other side's looking. I'm gonna come over here, actually. See, we're definitely getting a better uh, Maillard reaction there, that browning. We're gonna let this go another minute or so on there. Kinda of move it around a little bit so it doesn't stick. Get a little of that Wagyu oil. Watch the uh, spittle there. So that's about two minutes on that side. Let's take a peek. Yeah, it's looking better. I'll flip it over. Get the other side now. You can feel that crust is a lot different. Let's get a quick temperature check, see where we are. About 100 and... Almost 100 degrees. Like I said, we want to get this up to about 120 in the middle. We're gonna do another two minutes here on this side and then we'll sear the sides as well and see where we're at. I'm gonna close this just so it doesn't spit at us. We'll come back in two minutes. Okay, so we've been two minutes on the second side now. We're gonna see what our temperature is. Still a little ways, maybe in the center there, about 104 degrees or so. We're gonna go ahead and uh, look at this side. Yeah, it needs another, another 30 seconds or so on that side. You'll notice on a lot of uh, strip steaks, they have a big long line of fat that runs along the edge. We're gonna go ahead and get that next. Let's go ahead and take this and turn it on its side. You don't need to do a full two minutes on the edges to render that fat, maybe 30, 45 seconds or so. 
just gonna get it nice and brown and less uh, less fat. It'll render it out. And I'm gonna do the other side. And every second counts at this point, so make sure you're really checking that temperature. It'll come up fast. So let's go ahead and take this off. Okay, so we've now made three steaks three different ways on our pellet grill. You can see the first one here. This is the one we did. Uh, we just set the pellet grill to 450 degrees. Uh, we didn't use any cast iron whatsoever, um, and we just let it come up to internal temperature. If you look across these three steaks, I think the most interesting thing is that all three of these were cooked to the same internal temperature, but we got very different results on each one. So this one, like I said, uh, cooked at 450 degrees. This steak is the reason people say pellet grills can't make steaks because this is how they're cooking them. These are the results they're getting and I wouldn't be happy with this. I don't think many people would. You can see the fat along the side there isn't rendered at all. Whoever's eating this is gonna be cutting that off. It's got absolutely no color on it whatsoever. Um, you know, this looks like something you get in the school cafeteria as far as I'm concerned. This one, a little better. We did this in the cast iron, but we kept all the flame diffusers and everything in. Um, we got a little better crust down here, maybe a little better color. The fat rendered a little bit better, um, but not, not wonderfully. And um, it's definitely better than this one, but uh, still not as good as the one over here. This is the one we did on direct heat. Uh, we took the cast iron and we took all the components out of the pellet grill and we put the cast iron pan directly over the fire pot. This one we got up to about 450 degrees. This one we got to about, uh, I believe it was 650 degrees or so. Um, so you can see the huge difference that 200 degree makes as far as getting that Maillard reaction to happen, um, getting a nice uh, brown crust on there, getting the fat to render on the sides. So these were all cooked to medium rare. Um, and you can see the huge difference there, just taking a couple minutes to take those components out of your grill after you reverse sear uh, your steaks. Another option for searing your steaks on a pellet grill is using a product called Grill Grates. Now I have them set up here in our Pit Boss uh, 1150. I moved the middle grates out and I replaced them with the grill grates in the center here. Uh, now they are called grill grates. I wish they had a little less generic name because they're kind of hard to search for. I'll put a link to these ones in particular down in the uh, description below if you want to go right to them. Um, but basically they're an aftermarket uh, grill grate product that is designed to get uh, exceptionally hot conductive heat onto your uh, steaks. So I find they work best on a pellet grill like this that has the direct heat option. They absorb the most heat from that direct heat underneath. I tried them in the uh, Z grills using um, the way we did the cast iron on the second one with, uh, without taking out all the components and they really got no hotter than the cast iron itself. They were the grate or the grill was at about 450 degrees and the grill grates got to about 450 degrees. On this one, I opened up the flame broiler on the pit boss and we'll go ahead and check the temperature here. You can see these are getting up to about 679, 680 degrees in the center there. So getting really hot, even a little hotter than our cast iron was able to get on the Z grills with taking out all those components and everything. So it's probably the easiest method to get the hottest sear on your steaks if you have the direct heat option on your pit boss. Now you might say, well, I already have the direct heat option. What do I need grill grates for? I can just put the steak right over the direct heat of the fire pot. But uh, the nice thing about the grill grates is because the way they're designed to conduct heat, they take that hot, uh, that hot heat from the fire pot and it spreads out throughout all the grill grates. So you can buy one, two, three, four, you could fill up your whole grill with five of these things, have the open flame pot going and then get really hot uh, searing all across your grill. So that's what I think is the benefit of them. The other thing is because they have these, uh, these uh, grates running vertically, you can get actual sear marks on your steak. Now personally, I prefer just to have the steak flat. Um, you can flip these over and just do flat as well, like if you're doing hamburgers. Um, but if you want those grill marks, uh, you can definitely do that too. And I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. So we preheated another steak on the top rack at 275 degrees, got it to an internal temperature of 90 degrees, so the exact same method we used on everything else. This steak has been salt and peppered, but has not been oiled. We got the pit boss uh, ripping on high here. We're up to about 435 degrees. Now again, that's the ambient internal air temperature, but if you look at our grill grates, let's measure them again. They've been going for another 10 minutes or so here since we showed you last time. We'll check them. They're right over the fire pot with the uh, flame broiler open. I'm just gonna check. And you can see it says high. And if you're able to read that high there, that means it's over 750 degrees. That's the highest that the uh, 
that the um, infrared thermometer can read. If I kind of shoot it down on the uh, hot enamel here, it says 178 or so. But if we come back to the grill grates, and I'm trying not to go through, I'm trying to go down the actual grill grates itself. Yeah, it doesn't matter where I shine it. Eh, maybe a little, little less over here. But still, that 710 uh, degrees is way hotter than what we were getting uh, with the cast iron, even using that direct heat method, taking all those uh, components out. So let's go ahead and get our steak on and see how it does. We're gonna brush it with a little grape seed oil this time. I think using a little uh, high point smoke oil works better on the grill grates than the tallow does because the tallow just kind of goes everywhere. So if you don't have it contained in a cast iron skillet or something, um, it kind of makes a mess. The oil is a little easier just to get on the steak. We're gonna go ahead and flip this and do the other side. You can see it's got a little bit of gray from just the preheat, but there's no uh, no char marks. There's no sear on this at all. But we'll go ahead and get the sides, get that nice and oiled up. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on the grill grates. Now the best way to get the uh, crosshatch pattern is to start it uh, side to side and then we're going to turn it 90 degrees about a minute or so into the sear and then we'll flip it. So let's go ahead and get this on just like that. Let that sit for about a minute or so and then we'll turn it 90 degrees to get that crosshatch pattern. Okay, that's about one minute. We're going to turn it 90 degrees now. I'm going to place it down nice and gently so that we get those nice uh, crisp crosshatch patterns on there. Let it go for another minute or so. And then we'll flip it and do the same thing on the other side. All right, it's been another about a min minute on that side. We're gonna go ahead and flip it. I did kind of 90 degrees before. I'm gonna do a little more diagonal this time. So I'm gonna turn it this way. You can see we've got those nice uh, crosshatch patterns on the stake there. We'll give it about minute, minute and a half on that, and then we'll rotate it again. Let's check our temperature just to see where we are. Again, we're going for about 120 degrees to take it off. Eh, still at about 110 or so, so we're right on track. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, sides just to help render that fat out a little more. Now we'll do the other side. And we'll go ahead and get our uh, wire rack baking sheet combo. Transfer it over. Just measured, we were about 125 degrees a second ago, so a little higher than I wanted, but it'll come up to about 135 or so, which is slightly more than medium rare. But that's uh, generally how you want to do it on the grill grates when you're using the uh, cross hatch pattern. All right, now I'm gonna show you my hands down favorite way to sear a steak on a pellet grill, particularly our uh, Pit Boss with the direct heat option. I appreciate you guys sticking to the end here. It's about 100 degrees out today. Um, if you're getting value from this content, make sure to hit that like, and we'd love if you'd subscribe as well. Um, and if you've got any other uh, ways that you like to make steak on your pellet grill, um, we'd love to hear those tips as well from you. Let us know down in the comments. Um, we'd love to hear them. And maybe we could even uh, try them out in a video next time. But I'm gonna show you what I do now. I've got our grill grates set up still over the middle pit boss is still on high all right but I've got the grill grates flipped over now and uh, the cross hatch patterns are, are kind of cool I guess but I really like having that full surface area uh, bark Maillard reaction crust sear whatever we want to call it on my entire steak so we've got another steak here it's our last one that we kind of preheated and reverse seared we uh, salt and peppered it we didn't oil it yet I'm gonna put a little more grapeseed oil on this one gonna brush it on with our uh, silicone basting brush here all right let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our temperature on our grill grates We've got our uh, infrared thermometer here if we go right over the center where we're gonna put the steak we're over 750 degrees so I've got the pellet grill on high and uh, the flame broiler open so you can see that down here we got the lid open but our temperature is only running about it was about 400 before since I opened the lid it's dropped but you don't need the lid temperature or the pit boss temperature to say 750 degrees to get 750 degrees sear on your steak you just need the right equipment so let's go ahead and put this guy on don't need to worry about cross hatches or turning we're just gonna get them on for two minutes here Okay, 
that's about two minutes on that side. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how that side's looking real good. Bring that into the sunlight so you can see it. Getting a nice dark crust down there. I'm gonna bring it back over the flame uh, broiler. Another minute or two on this side and then we'll do the edges and then we'll be about done. It's been another minute and a half on that side. We're gonna go ahead and get our edges now. Get a flare up like that, just move the uh, steak out of the way, let it die down for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and close the flame broiler just for a second here. It's still plenty hot. There's a lot of fat on these edges, that's why it's flaring up on us. And let's check our temperature. Right about 100 and 117, yeah, 120 there. We're gonna go ahead and take this guy off. You can see that nice uh, crust we were able to get on there. I like, again, putting it on this wire rack uh, baking sheet combo because if you put it on a plate, that bottom is just gonna get soggy immediately on the bottom. And we worked real hard for the crust on both sides. So we wanna let this rest uh, with air circulation all around it. So let it rest for about five, six, seven minutes on here before you transfer it to a plate. Okay, let's take a look at all five steaks now and kind of compare how they turned out. So again, we have the very first one we did on the pellet grill set at 450 degrees, indirect heat, just cooked it till it hit 120 in the middle, uh, medium rare, and we took it off. So we didn't render the fat, it's gray, it's not edible. This one we did in a cast iron pan at 450 degrees. This one we did in a cast iron pan where we took all the uh, heat diffusing components out of the, of the Z grill and we did it over the direct flame of the flame pot and we were able to get uh, up to 650 degrees in the cast iron pan on this one. You can see that difference between the two uh, temperature ranges on there. This is the one with the grill grates we did with the uh, actual uh, hash marks from the grills. You can see that while they look kind of cool, I guess, um, you only get that mired reaction on the spots that's making direct contact with the meat. The other parts of the steak don't look all that much different than uh, this one over here. So while this might look kind of cool in a picture, uh, when you're eating steak, I would much rather have uh, this or this if it was me. Uh, this is the one we did on the grill grates, uh, flipped over on the flat side. Again, that's my favorite way to do it. We were up over 750 degrees there. We did a couple minutes on each side and we were able to really, you can see all that fat rendered out that's just pooling on top of the steak, looks delicious. Um, we got nice brown, crusty uh, sear marks on the, or sear on the outside. Um, this one just looks delicious. I'd much rather go with this one or this one maybe this one in third and don't even bother with those two. So there are ways to sear steaks on your pellet grill. You just have to be a little creative about it and have the right tools and the right setup. So hopefully depending on whatever kind of pellet grill you have, this gives you some options to work with and some ways to get started. Um, whether it's the cast iron pan on a, uh, on a grill like our Z grills over here, or the grill grates on a direct heat option like our Pit Boss pellet grill. Uh, one caveat with the grill grates, make sure you measure from front to back in your pellet grill uh, to get the right size for your specific model. They do come in lots of different sizes. Again, I'll link to the ones we have for our 1150 down below. You can start there and then just pick the one that's the right uh, measurement for you. And you can buy one, two, three, up to five of them to fill up your pit boss if you wanted to do a whole bunch of steaks for a party, just like we did this one. So uh, thanks for watching. You can get more information about pellet grills and uh, how-to guides and all things uh, related to barbecue at madbackyard.com. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.